And we should be live again. Can you guys hear me well? The camera's good. Sound should be good. Hi, Brian. Almost time. It's time now. Great. Brian B. BV3D, the, the channel, right? I think I watched the um, S2 dryer review. I think it was yesterday or the day before. The new uh, new dryer from Sunlu, quite an interesting product. I may need to send you some uh, some filament to see if we can dry some of our uh, some of our nylon. Hi, Kui, 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 one eight two. How do you pronounce that? Cody Logan, Santiago, hey, again. Thank you for joining again, Santiago. Make a tatter, greetings to you too. So guys, today, um, that's our very, very first weekly live stream. Uh, we did a live stream last week to uh, answer some of the questions for, uh, for, uh, for the Black Friday to make sure that you, know, you can choose the materials uh, that, that you want for your application. And we thought that uh, people were very happy with uh, you know, us sharing, taking, you know, taking some time to answer all the questions. So we thought, how about we just do you know, like a weekly live stream? And then we'll just go through some questions that you have, and then we'll present also some of the materials that we have. Uh, we start to have a, a wide range of, uh, of products uh, we have now, I think, around 25 to 28 different uh, materials, and then within them, you know, we have different uh, different effects, uh, etc. So we'll take an hour uh, every every Thursday at this time, which should be 8:30 uh, East Coast and 5:30 uh, Pacific time, and then every every Thursday of every week, uh, we'll take an hour together, and then we can we can share about uh, 3D printing. So maybe maybe you can share also a little bit about uh, you know yourself in the chat. What uh, do you guys have printers? Do you guys what printer do you have? I know some people has like a basement of ten printers inside, or uh, do you guys have a, a small printer? And then uh, what do you guys like uh, like to print? Spanish nickname for Enrique. Oh, okay, got it, got it. Now I have the name. Some silk PLA, yeah. I want you to sh show a little bit. So, you know, I, I, I'm the one that uh, that uh, answer the uh, the different comments and uh, are very active on the social media. So I try to follow the different topics. And I see recently we're we're talking a lot about uh, the different silk filament we have, especially uh, especially this one, which is the uh, PLA Pro Silver. Um, as you guys know, I don't know if you have followed the. Uh, the Twitter uh, threads where we talked about the uh, the uh, the silk issue. Well, not an issue, but in in order to make the material uh, silky effect, then we have to modify a little bit the formula. And sometimes it can affect the properties of the material that you like about PLA, which is humidity, um, which is something we believe we have solved with our PLA Pro. So so far, the PLA Pro only comes with silver when it comes to more silkier finish, uh, but we have more uh, color coming. Actually, this purple is uh, is on the way, if not already uh, already available. We are going to have um, ten different color on our PLA Pro series, but we can talk more about that uh, later. So sometimes you will see me looking down. I have the chat in front of me, so I want to make sure I keep up with uh, with 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 the questions. So we have uh, Josia. Josia, is that? Is that the one that asked uh, all the great questions on the last stream? I, th I think so, if, if I remember well. Uh, any carbon fiber PLA or PTG in the future? Uh, not in the future, in the present. Actually, uh, we have a PLA CF that is uh, already available. I do not have prints around here to show you. Let me check. No, I do not have. But we have, uh, we have a PLA CF, uh, so if you go on now, uh, on, on Amazon and then you type Polymaker PLA carbon fiber, then you will find our, our carbon fiber reinforced. So this reinforced PLA was more for the surface texture. Uh, this, this material is part of our beta testing products. That's why it's only available on Amazon. Actually, there's a lot of products from us on Amazon that are not hidden, but it's kind of a beta testing. So you can look around, there is some uh, specific materials, which obviously I don't have here because they are in beta testing, but there is like some kind of 
strange TPU, there's some kind of strange PLA. So you can look around. We like to, you know, release something and see people that, you know, don't know much about our company and try the material at, and give a very unbiased uh, uh, feedback on that material. And then we can learn a lot from, um, uh, from this feedback. Um, PTG, no, PTG, not yet. We do have a lot of, uh, well, not a lot, but we do have a nylon that comes in carbon fiber, the nylon six and our nylon 12. This, uh, this is, let me check the quality. This is the nylon 12, which has, I don't know if you have seen the, uh, let me check the reflection here. I don't know if you have seen the post on, uh, on Twitter. I basically said that, uh, we forgot to implement the layer line on this, uh, on this material. Um, it, 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 it was a small joke, but, um, but it's, it's, it's true, actually. When you print with this material, the carbon fiber really helps with, uh, with the quality. And the great thing is that it's really, really easy to print if you have a, a, a hot, uh, all metal hot end. Uh, but you don't need a heated chamber with this uh, PA12 CF. And PA6 CF is, uh, is uh, very similar. We can talk about the difference. Uh, I, I talked about it uh, two weeks ago in, in the stream, but if you are still interested, I can go a little bit more into details on, on these difference, differences. Um, Maker Tater, I read somewhere that silk PLA is actually PLA mixed with polyester, is accurate. Um, well, there's different way of making silk. I don't know how other company do, but um, for ours is, um, it is it is a mix with uh, different material. I, I I won't be able to uh, to tell the exact material, but uh, but indeed you you are right that it's a mix with uh, with a different polymer that will help with um, with this uh, with this finish. But there is different way of doing it. Uh, this is not what we are doing for the uh, for the PLA Pro seal. Um, yes, he is for Josia, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember that name. Because he was a, he was everywhere in the chat. Um, BB3D, yes, welcome. Actually, I, I I made a small comment at the beginning. I, I don't know if you if, if you heard that, but um, I said that um, I think yesterday or, or the day before I, I watched your review on the uh, I think you reviewed the dryer, the S2 dryer, and then I was thinking of sending you some uh, very hygroscopic professional filament engineering filament that we have so that you can try, you know. How, how good it can uh, support this filament because uh, that could be a good recommendation for our, uh, maybe our polymide series or even our polysmooth. Although I, I think there's no problem to handle the polysmooth one. I wish PA12 CF was cheaper um, because it seems like a nice filament for smooth surface. Yes, um, I think we discussed the, uh, you know, the price uh, uh, topic last, last uh, two weeks ago on the, uh, on the PA12, but, but definitely the carbon fiber, that's why we released that PLA carbon fiber reinforced. It's a reinforced, but really, I, I don't think it gives too much of a reinforcement. It may add uh, some modulus, but the carbon fiber will create some, some downside uh, uh, as well. But, but the surface finish is, is just amazing. Uh, and I think that's the main reason why we should use uh, a PLA carbon fiber. If, if we really want uh, something with mechanical properties, then I wouldn't go to a PLA that is reinforced. I would just change the, uh, change the polymer. Uh, next one, what is Polymaker's strongest filament that does not take additional heated, heated chamber or other special condition? Strongest filament that does not take additional heated chamber. Okay, so what filament does not require a heated chamber, uh, but is very strong? Well, basically all our nylon. All our nylon are the strongest we have and none of them require a heated chamber. The main reason, like I mentioned last week, the main reason is our warp free technology. This, this guy, which is very, very heavy, is 100% infill. And this was printing, you can hear, 100% infill. Uh, like, I don't know, two, three, or four days printing this uh, 0.2 layer height on the uh, Ultimaker uh, extended, Ultimaker 2 extended plus. And uh, so what we wanted to test is whether our nylon are really printable on, uh, on uh, open printer. And uh, obviously nylon are one of the, the strongest filament we have. If you really, really want, 
the strongest, then uh, I can recommend the PA12. Uh, the copy A is more uh, cost effective when it comes to comparing the, the strength that, uh, that you will give compared to the, uh, the ease of print. So definitely, if someone asks me the strongest filament that does not require heated chamber, otherwise I would go a little bit in the, in the polycarbonate, then I would, uh, I would mention our, our polymide, uh, polymide series, which is all our nylon. We have copy A, which is a copolyamide, nylon 6, nylon 6, 6. We have uh, PS6CF, uh, carbon fiber reinforced. We have PS6 glass fiber reinforced. And we have PS12, carbon fiber reinforced. Uh, PS6 uh, carbon fiber and uh, PS6 glass fiber comes in 500 gram spool. And the glass fiber start at $29.99. Uh, so you can try this one. Uh, if you, you don't need a heated chamber. Actually, it's quite the opposite. If you use a heated chamber, then you will start to have warping issue due to the technology we are using. Uh, if this one we print it on the heated chamber and then we put it up to like 60 degree or even 70 degree, even the bed we put it 60, 70 degree, then it will start to warp. Then you will start to have issues because of the crystallization behavior. And actually that's allow you to print like big gears. You know, nylon are, are, are pretty good with the, uh, with, uh, with the uh, durability. And so these, these are gears and actually this huge thing here, this is also an island that uh, this, uh, this company couldn't print uh, a big, big parts, um, durable big parts uh, using nylon because it was always warping until we developed it, that, uh, that polymide uh, material. I have an even bigger one uh, downstairs, but uh, I couldn't bring it. Um, probably Polymaker Polymax PLA. Um, well, yeah, Polymax PLA is very strong, but you know, it, to be accurate, it's very tough. So, you know, a lot of people talk about, you know, strong filaments. Uh, I always divide the strength into three, although there is a third one, but uh, a fourth one, but there is the, uh, you know, the, the tensile strength resistance that, uh, that, uh, that I'm taking. Then there is the, uh, the uh, impact, you know, the, uh, the impact, impact strength. And then there is the, uh, the module is the bending stress. So you have tensile, like, uh, you know, when, when you tear parts, how strong the filament resists to, uh, to the stress that tear, it, tear the material apart, how strong the material is to resist the impact, and then how strong it is to resist deformation. Uh, so Polymax PLA is very strong for uh, impact resistance. So this is the, uh, the Polymax PLA. You see, actually, I broke it also. Is it Polymax PLA? If I broke it, maybe not. Last last week, uh, last week um, stream, I did a live test, and uh, you can check the the, the behavior difference. Um, I wish I have some stuff to break, but they told me to not break the uh, the good models, and uh, it looks like there's only good models around me. Uh, but next time, next week, I will try to prepare. Uh, other samples and then I will break it again uh, in front of you so you can see the behavior. So Polymax PLA, yes, does not require a heated chamber, just regular uh, PLA setting, uh, but it has, uh, it has um, um, a very high impact resistance, but the modulus, if you're looking for something rigid, then uh, Polymax PLA is uh, more ductile material. Um, Brian, that sounds great. I wasn't here, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. So um, yeah, let's see. Let's see if we can uh, if we can get some uh, some material to uh, to push that uh, that dryer. See if it can uh, if it can help. Uh, working on a project to recycle bad prints, and I think I'm going to throw away silk prints because that blends are all over the board. From what I can figure out, yeah. So you know that's you know that's the issue with the whole recycling industry, right? How, how to uh, identify the, the material. You know, I've seen a lot of uh, company recently, which is great, releasing recycled uh, PLA. And the source is always an internal source, uh, which means, you know, they, uh, they extrude the filament and then during their quality control, they might have some filament that don't pass the quality control and then they throw them away. So now they are recycling them. So they are putting, putting this filament back into the extruder and then creating some uh, recycled filament. So, which is great. Uh, internally, you limit your waste, uh, but I wish we can finally find a way that we can collect back the, uh, the uh, PLA waste in order to create some new filament. 
but that's extremely hard at the moment uh, for two reasons. The, the, the first reason is, you know, we, we have no ideas how companies uh, make their, their, their PLA. And, you know, I mean, we, we're not asking for everyone to, to uh, you know, unveil their, their formula, but that, that's one of the challenges. The second one is the scale. I don't think we have enough PLA now to economically make sense to start this uh, recycling uh, recycling process. For the spool, it's the same. You know, we started, before we started the cover spool, we thought about a way to uh, to recycle the, uh, you know, the plastic spool. We wanted everyone to send it to, a, you know, a same location, and then we would do like a big shipment to send it back to us. Then we would reuse them. But economically, it was, uh, it was, it was very, very hard. So that's why we thought, maybe the cargo spool could be a better idea. And the cargo spool doesn't prevent us to do the same in the future. I mean, they're pretty strong. It's not like a cargo spool that, uh, you know, after you use up, actually, I don't know if you see, if you have the cargo spool at the moment, but after you finish it, the spool is still, uh, you know, it, it, it hurt to throw it away because it's still a very rigid piece of cartoon that is very functional. So even though it's cardboard, I think there is still some upcycle to think about for, uh, for these spools. But definitely better than uh, than the plastic spool. Um, if there was anything you could print with, what would it be? I would love to print something in titanium. Oh, okay. So at the beginning, when you asked the question, I thought like what material, and then you mentioned titanium. Okay. Uh, what would I love to print with? Well, um, I really like the. Uh, actually, it's uh, it's already done, but. Uh, I really like the uh, concrete printing. I, I don't know why. I, I mean, I think I know why, but uh, it's because, you know, things around us are, are, are made of uh, concrete and uh, or wood. You know, I come from a, from a tiny Pacific island where, you know, we still build our, our home with, uh, you know, uh, uh, concrete and then woods for the, uh, what do you call that? You know, the, the ceiling structure, etc. And then I wish we could, the concrete is done. We can print with concrete. There's a great company that developed it, uh, this technology, but wood. What if you could print with wood, like actual wood? Then you could, uh, that would be amazing. You can print a house with wood. I mean, anyway, so you can print with cellulose, right? Which is, you know, kind of the base of wood. But uh, if you're asking me this question, then wood would be my answer because, you know, we, we already solved the concrete part, but uh, I don't think one day we're going to solve how to print with wood. Um, plus one spool, uh, huge cube of nylon. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's crazy. This is, this is just crazy. I mean, uh, you know, there, when we moved our office, uh, uh, some people wanted to throw this away, but I say, no way. I mean, that's, that's not, not, I don't think a lot of uh, companies or uh, people has a huge cube of nylon like this that has been printed um, without any warping. I mean, look at that. It's, it's flat. There's, there's no, not even a small, a small warp or a small deformation. And there's no brim. I, I mean, you cannot see very well, but I didn't use any brim. I just use a glass. Then a layer of glue, you know, the magical uh, regular glue. And, uh, and this is what, uh, what came out. Just amazing. How, uh, let me check. Um, how abrasive is copy A and also how is that impeller to opaque? I print copy A natural and it's super translucent. Oh, okay, okay. How is it opaque? Yeah, yeah. So actually, this is not this is not the um, uh, the uh, the copy we uh, we we release. This is because you see the the layer height is uh, is bigger. I believe it's 0.3. And uh, we had uh, let me check if I remember well uh, because it's it should be darker than the one you have because I think this one was one of the first formula that we that we developed it if I remember well. Um, so that might be the reason, but actually, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty translucent. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I cannot, maybe I will post some picture on social media after, uh, but if you put it at the light, I can basically uh, see it through. So uh, it, it should be, it should be similar, just the formula before. I think the one we released was already a, a third iteration of the uh, actual formula. And uh, I did uh, forget the picture, the, the question. Uh, how abrasive, yeah, yeah, yeah. So how abrasive 
it is it is in between uh, it is in between PLA and CF. So it's not as abrasive as CF, definitely, uh, but it does have a component that makes it more abrasive than a regular regular material like PTG or PLA. So I would recommend if you are heavily printing with copy, I would recommend to switch to a to a hardened nozzle, uh, de de definitely. I read, I read online that Polymaker is claiming your regular PLA, not the Polytera, doesn't suffer from heat creep. Please explain. Um, okay, you read online. I, I don't know where, but uh, let's um, let's see. Heat creep. So heat creep. Let me explain a little bit. Um, so I believe this is our regular PLA. So heat creep means uh, you put stress on the material for uh, a certain amount of time and then you check you check how it deformed uh, why heat creep is because usually we do this test at different temperature and then we see if at uh, maybe at 60 degree if you put uh, you know a, a, an amount of stress then at 60 degree it might you know it might slowly deform a uh, plastic deformation which means after i don't know let's say after three days you remove the load and then you check and then you will have a, a deformation. So let's say I fix this on the wall and then I put a, I put a weight here for two days at, uh, let's say at ambient temperature, like 25 degrees C. Yeah, so I will talk in degrees C in uh, meter, you know, all this metric stuff. I, I have no idea how to convert. I'm sorry for that. Maybe I need to have a table here and uh, to help me to convert. But um, maybe in the chat, you can help me to, uh, to convert. Um, so, yeah, so you put a load here and then you wait two days and at ambient temperature, uh, you can see after how, how it deformed. So we are still developing our standards to test the creep of our, um, the creep behavior of our material. I, I won't be able to say that our PLA is better than other PLA because I don't have data in front of me, especially for the other PLA, but I do know the modulus which means the uh, ability to resist the formation of our PLA is one of the best. And, and, and I'm, talking, uh, I'm talking comparing data, uh, not data that other company give compared to the one we give, but data that we take a lot of different PLA, we do exactly the same test, and then we see where our PLA stands, which is usually how, how we, uh, we do our TDS. Um, so I would believe, I don't know where you read that, but I wouldn't be surprised that as it has a high modulus, it could resist the deformation. So the creep behavior could be better. Uh, but at high temperature, I mean, 60, 70 degree, I believe all PLA will just behave the same. Uh, if uh, you put this in a 60 degree C room and then you put a load here, then uh, I think they will all deform at, uh, at some point. But you can share the link. I can, I can have a look at, uh, at uh, where, where, you, where you read that, uh, that information. And hopefully we will come up with uh, the standard to test uh, the creep behavior of our product and we can share all the data. When you anneal, when you anneal it, as its crystallinity increase, it becomes opaque. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's like peak, right? When you, uh, when you anneal the material, it will turn uh, a little bit darker because the crystals will reflect the light differently. Uh, I don't know if you've seen some video with peak, but it, it, it's it's the same. When when they print peak, the as you know as they print the uh, you know the the bed is very hot, and then you will see it's darker towards the uh, the bed because it will it will, it will it will crystallize on on the bed slowly, and then it just go like this. So uh, yes, you're you're totally right. Um, let me check. Um, the filament comes anneal. Okay, okay, so that was the answer. Will there be a high temperature filaments that can print easily other than nylon, like azotropic reinforced PP or reinforced PPS blind? Uh, yes, there will be one particular one that, uh, but I, I think you asked this question before and I pretty much tell you the answer about which one is gonna be, uh, because you mentioned it again here. Uh, again, I won't be able to talk too much about it, but Q, end of Q1 next year, there will be one more specific material that has very high mechanical properties and does not have high 
3D printer requirements. Thanks for your answer. Got me excited to try your nylon. Also enjoy your interview with the 3D printing, 3D print general. But my first two spool of polymaker phenomenal on his recommendation. Great, thank you for your trust on, uh, on, on uh, purchasing our products. What, what product did you get? Did you get the PLA Pro? I think we talked about PLA Pro on the, uh, on the stream with, uh, with Sean. And uh, yeah, great that uh, you learned a little bit more on Island. Uh, I think, you know, not a lot of people know the, uh, these features about our Island. I mean, I should, I should take a picture again of that huge cube and show to people what, what, what it is capable of. Um, hello, everyone. Hi, Steven. How are you? Will Polymaker come out with a dichromatic PLA? Oh, you also saw that, right? Um, we are thinking, you know, we, we, we can release something that is already out there. But what we are trying to do always is to release something that is you know that that is unique that that brings something to the to 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 you so it could be a different color a different uh dichromatic uh pla so the dual color pla uh that you don't have access but we usually don't release just a copy paste of uh of another filament because that doesn't bring anything to uh to to the customer except if there's a, a specific material that is uh, very very expensive and then we develop the way to have the same material, but uh, much more cost effective. Then that brings something to you. So we are working on uh, trying to find a way to uh, bring an extra plus for, uh, for our customer when it comes to uh, this uh, changing filament, which I think is so smart. Uh, the first one I've seen, it was from Matter Hacker, I think. Uh, they call this, uh, how do they call this? The Quantum, Quantum PLA, I believe, uh, which is uh, just magical. I, I really like it. Um, have you thought of making some antimicrobial filaments with copper or silver ions? I think uh, it could be really useful in these times. Uh, yes, we thought about it. Actually, we had a, a German company that contacted us with uh, this specific additive. We are still working on it uh, because it, 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 is, it is useful when it, uh, when it prints very easily. Uh, the main thing is, you know, during, during that period, a lot of uh, new people were drive to 3D printing, drove to 3D printing, and uh, in order to use the, uh, the um, you know, the 3D printer to create the, uh, the PPE, the uh, protective, uh, what, protective something equipment. And, um, and we wanted it, they were using, uh, you know, a, a desktop printer, a, let's say a consumer level desktop printer. So we wanted to create something that, uh, that could be printed on, uh, on this printer and that actually has a certification. And uh, that's much more challenging than uh, what we thought. It's still a project that is you know, on our pipeline, uh, but, but it is a big challenge to have this, uh, this certification in order to have an actual print that can be uh, certified. A filament with W shell, with W shell of nylon, inside something else like PC to have low creep nylon. Okay, so you mean uh, a core extrusion filament with, uh, let me check, W shell of nylon, with a shell of nylon and uh, something like PC inside. Yeah, we, um, I, I, don't, I don't know what would that give, but uh, we, did, we did think about different way of, uh, of uh, making the filament with, uh, you know, with co-extruding different filament. Uh, there's, uh, there's some ideas. For example, I, I, I've seen some company making a hard shell and a flexible, a very soft inside. So that is, uh, you know, it's easy to print because the shell brings some rigidity to the filament and then the material is softer than what the filament feels, which, which I think is a good idea. Uh, but there is also some challenge there. I don't know what the nylon PC mix would give, uh, but that's some good ideas. Actually, I'm very happy that you guys, you know, bring some ideas on the table. You know, we are here to talk about 3D printing materials. Uh, I'm here to present what we have now, but I'm also here to, you know, discuss with you what's possible with, uh, with uh, uh, printing materials. Uh, you can give me your idea. I can try to give you some insight on how, you know, what's the process to formulate a filament and see if it's really doable on a, on a printer. 
uh, as a filament to print. I think uh, Maketer is talking about quantum maker PLS behavior in the hot end, such as during very retract heavy prints where heat creep. Oh, that heat creep. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, okay. So you're talking about the jam free technology. So, yes, heat creep when it comes to a 3D printer is, uh, you know, where, uh, where the heat from the hot end will leak to the cold end. Uh, Right now, the design of hot ends are much better than before. Um, but still, in consumer uh, printer, when you print very long prints or uh, high temperature prints, high temperature prints, sorry. When I mean high temperature is if you print PLA at a very high speed, you will have to increase that, uh, that uh, extrusion temperature. So we'll have to increase the, uh, the heat block temperature. There's a whole subject around the print temperature you put in your slicer against the actual temperature the material is uh, printed at. But um, if you are interested, we can, uh, we can dive into that subject later. I mean, every week we're going to talk about 3D printing materials. So, uh, you know, at some point we'll have to go deep. Otherwise, there won't be anything to talk about. Um, well, actually, I, I doubt we will run out of topic in 3D printing. Um, yeah, so that heat creep. So the problem is when you print at 220 degree or let's say 210 degree with your with your PLA, what happened is that the heat will climb up your uh, your uh, your uh, print head and will go to the uh, the cold end. And the problem in the cold end is if the cold end reach a temperature above 60 degree, then your PLA will start to soften and swollen and and uh, and swell. And the problem with that is that it will jam the filament. It will jam the filament in the cold end. And what we did is we designed, uh, all our PLA are designed in a way that um, the, the uh, crystallization is more advanced, or let's say it, it crystallized in a way that it, it uh, provides a higher heat resistant temperature to the filament. So the heat resistant temperature of the filament itself, not the print, the filament is up to 140 degrees C. So that means, even if you have heat creep issue with your with your printer, it won't affect, it won't jam. That's why we call it jam free because of the, the filament heat resistance. So I hope that answered the question. And I think the question was that uh, I think the filament come crystallized. I think that was an answer from uh, from someone else, if I remember well. So that's uh, that's the idea of how we uh, we control that uh, heat resistance behavior of the filament. And that's also why after you extrude then the heat resistance of, of the PLA of the print would have similar one as a regular PLA. So I hope that uh, that makes sense. If not, please, you know, ask which detail you want me to, uh, to dive into. Uh, the jump free text works well with uh, retraction. Yeah, so why the retraction works better is because you have, you have a filament that have a much sharper uh, change between being soft and uh, let's say liquid uh, like very low viscosity to a uh, very high viscosity, like basically solid. It, it goes very sharply from one to the other, which means when you print, you push the filament and the very bottom will become liquid and then will be pushed out. But if you retract, as the viscosity is very high all the way to almost the end, then you have a very good retraction. Retraction is what? Retraction is, you know, removing the pressure from the nozzle. And, and that basically work, uh, work very well. And if you, uh, if you check, you know, usually you do retraction because of oozing. Oozing comes from uh, two main things. Uh, well, three if you count the time, but it comes from the residual pressure that is in your nozzle. So you, you need to, to, uh, to uh, bring this residual pressure to zero. And you do that by retracting the filament. And then, and then the pressure inside the nozzle will be zero. So that's one way. Uh, that one factor that would make it use, uh, ooze if there is some residual pressure. The second one is gravity. So even if you retract, if you still have a lot of filament inside, then it will just the gravity will just uh, uh, pull it down. So the fact that we have a very sharp point between solid and liquid means that we are we are taking much more out of the nozzle, which prevents the uh, oozing. The third one is time. You know, for flexible filament, it's very hard to retract. Well, I'll give you one tip. If you don't leave time for the filament to ooze, then you don't have this problem. Sometimes I print with, uh, with TPU. I basically uh, just remove the retraction so I don't have 
you know, this issue of, uh, of, uh, of the filament bending out of the uh, extruder because I haven't modified my printers. Um, but, but I just, I just push my, uh, my uh, travel speed to a maximum. And I basically print and then it goes so fast to the other side that it doesn't even have time to ooze. So if you manage these three things, then uh, you should be able to have, uh, uh, you know, less artifact on your print. Um, but coming down to the uh, why jam free improve the retraction, I, I hope that makes sense. Um, yes, the jam free phrasing is what I'm thinking of. Okay, my Prusa Mark 3S is not very good at ironing because the slow extrusion speed leads to heat creep up to the, yeah, exactly, which caused the filament to soften in the filament gears and uh, misfit. Yeah, so. Try, I don't know which uh, material you are using at the moment, but if, if the real problem is the heat creep, if you have identified this as the problem, then definitely try our, uh, try our filament. Uh, that, that should solve the problem because even if your coal end goes up to a, let's say crazy temperature like 70 or 80 degrees C, which I don't think it, it will, but you, you still won't have this, uh, this uh, heat creep issue. Um, I just use polylite PLA and it works. Yeah, polylite PLA is, uh, you know, we call it a regular PLA, but if you check the TDS, it's, uh, I think it's, uh, it shouldn't be considered as just a regular PLA. Like we discussed two weeks ago, I think we should have some kind of in between the PLA Pro or Plus, like the tougher version and the regular PLA. I think there should still be a step where you have PLAs that are uh, very, very high quality. I mean, the uh, molecular weight of the raw material we are using for the PLA is, uh, is uh, very high, which means, what does that mean? It means the chain of the polymer is very long, which means it provides very, very high mechanical properties. I believe that's why our PLA has a very, very high modulus. Um, next question. Just use, uh, I have tried your Lava Red PLA and I love it. Printed great like butter. Stephen Paul, yeah. Let me check where is our lava red. This is our lava red. You see how cute this guy is? This is uh, how you call that already? Tri Triceratops. Triceratops? Something like this, like the dinosaur. This is lava red. We have the whole collection of, uh, of, uh, of prints of uh, all the different colors. I mean, how many colors of Polyterra do you have? Do you have the whole 28 color collection? Uh, this is one of the first one, the, the Lava Red, very nice one. All of these models are available on Thingiverse. Actually, I, uh, I designed them myself. <laughs> that's why there is the NT, that's my name. So I use all of these uh, small animals to, um, to print uh, all the different colors, because I think I designed around uh, a little bit more than 32 different animals. And so each color of Polyterra, I print a new animal. And then the marble one, the marble one, I also, uh, let me check. We have marble, yeah, there you go. We have marble uh, series for, uh, for the Polyterra. And in the animals I design, I also design some uh, uh, mystic, mystic creatures. So this is the, uh, which one is which one? This is the centaur, I think, and this is the minotaur one way or the other. And uh, you can see the marble effect. I think the marble effect goes very well with uh, like mythical creature or mystic creature, I don't remember. Next one, very happy that, uh, that the Polyterra works well on, uh, on your end. What, what printer are you using on, uh, with, the, uh, with the Polyterra? I like Polylite PLA, although for some reason, my black spool print worse than my blue spool, probably running into some issue with extrusion due to the high flow rate. Um, indeed, I mean, you shouldn't have problem uh, this way, but that highlight uh, one point of 3D printing material, which is depending on which die you are using, it may slightly affect the extrusion rate. When I say slightly, it shouldn't be more than a five degree uh, change in, the, uh, in your printing temperature. Why? Because it may, it may affect the melt index. Uh, that's one part of our quality control. We always make sure that we stay within a certain range for all our colors, because we don't want people to, you know, when they print with black, then they have to have this setting. When they print in blue, they have this setting. 
usually for all our materials, whatever the color, you should be able to to uh, to keep the same profile. But that's a good point. That that's one part of uh, our job that uh, that is uh, not always known from people. It's like from color to color, how to keep the same material, the same uh, printing setting. Uh, what about selling pallets for pallet extruder? Oh, so that means you don't know our Polycore series. Um, maybe because it's not, you know, on Amazon, on our website, or it's actually on our international website. There is a series of product that is called Polycore. And this Polycore has a bunch of material. And these are for, uh, these are for uh, pallet extruders. So I'm not sure if you heard about um, the bridges that we have printed in China. There is uh, one in Shanghai. There is one in, uh, was it Wuhan, I think? There's a, there's a couple of bridges that uh, we printed. I mean, when I talk about bridge, I'm actually meaning a bridge, like a 25-meter bridge, uh, 25 by what, 5? I think 5 meter. Takes, uh, I think it took, uh, let me remember, 20 or 25 days to print that, uh, that bridge, uh, if I remember well, in uh, ASA glass fiber reinforced. And that was using pallets. Uh, yeah, because if you use filament for that uh, 28 days, that's gonna be uh, very long. But uh, yeah, we do have a whole range of, uh, of material for pallet printing. Uh, also, will there be other colors for PS6GF? 3D Xtech has some new colors, natural and black would be nice addition. Yes, uh, we are working on uh, on new colors for GF. Uh, I there's three of them. Uh, I, I won't be able to say the name, but if you wait a little bit, the same. I think. Uh, uh, let me think. I think it's Q2 next year. We'll have these uh, these coming to the to the market. So what we wanted to solve is the color consistency from a batch to another batch, and um, and that's uh, that's an issue that needs to be solved in order for you to. Uh, if uh, mid print you have uh, you know you run out of filament and then you take another spool, then we don't want you to see like some kind of color change in the uh, in the print. So uh, we are solving that challenge and then uh, we will come up with some uh, new colors. And thank you for the uh, for the uh, recommendation on the color. So I note uh, what did you say again? Uh, let me check. Uh, where was that? Black and natural. Yes. Right now we have a dark gray. Santiago, I think uh, drying uh, polyamide is difficult and maybe it could rise the price. Have you tried? Oh, dyeing. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Dyeing PA is difficult. Uh, have you tried dyeing your PA prints with Senegal fabric dye? Yeah, uh, that's a good point, Santiago. The, um, the uh, the polyamide uh, can die very easily. I mean, very easily. There is a process. I believe 3D Print General was it 3D Print General? Uh, there is there is one video on YouTube that uh, that dyed the nylon uh, like in boiling water with uh, with dye. Uh, it, the result is not you know it's still so so right. I still think we should uh, we should print with the actual color we want. Uh, but that's one one possibility. Um, Natural doesn't die through black could be from uh, PS6CF. Yeah, yeah. So if you really need black, then you can also you know change to a uh, PS6CF. But uh, the GF brings that uh, cost effectiveness if you don't need the high mechanical properties of uh, of carbon fiber. I would love to collect all of the Polyterra colors. Just have to convince my significant other. Yeah, yeah. That's always the uh, the uh, the point, right? <laughs> Just the lava red. Wish I had them all. Yeah, it's like a it's like a collection. I've seen I've seen uh, many users having like the whole collection, like the twenty eight colors uh, ranked by uh, you know color shade. You know, like uh, when you have the whole uh, rainbow. Uh, that that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. Actually, uh, we made a joke in the uh, in the company because I'm. I'm uh, I'm pretty tall. I'm above the average. I'm two meter, which is uh, I have no idea in feet, but uh, that's pretty tall. And if we stack up the 28 colors of Polyterra, it's still not higher than me. So we need to release one or two color, just that I don't know why, but just have that stack of 
all the colors the same height as me. <laughs> just just finding reason to uh, release new colors. Uh, because I don't think yes, I would love to collect all of the yeah. That's a good point, Josia. The fiber uh, will be the issue if you try to dye the the nylon. Uh, you can dye pure nylon. I would love to color. Yeah, okay, I got that one. I wish there was yellow TPU 95 uh, HF and rigid high temp TPU. Uh, yellow TPU 95 HF. Um, yeah, it's not in the pipeline yet. We don't have new colors coming for that. Um, but you can share a little bit your experience with this one. Uh, the goal of launching, the goal of launching this uh, this uh, special high flow TPU was to solve the problem of printing with TPU. I don't know what's your experience, but you should be able to use very similar setting as regular PLA, even though it's uh, it's uh, TPU. And the main reason is the melt index of that TPU is very high, which means you will be able at 210 degree uh, to require a very minimum amount of pressure in order to extrude from, uh, from the nozzle. Because what's hard? What's hard with printing with TPU? To print, you have to push the filament, right? You have to create pressure in the nozzle. The pressure needs to be enough to compensate uh, the friction. So you have the viscosity of the material uh, against uh, the pressure. So if the viscosity is very, very low, then you don't need a lot of pressure in order to extrude. But if the viscosity is very high, then you need a lot of pressure in order to, uh, to extrude the filament. So you have two ways. One way to extrude is to push, to add more pressure, to push more. The other way is to reduce the viscosity of the material. How do you reduce the viscosity of the material? You increase the temperature. So, you know, I had a lot of people struggling printing with TPU and they print around 210, 220. I print my TPU at 250. It, it doesn't matter. It's not the kind of material that's gonna degrade at 250. So why I print at 250? Because I bring that viscosity down, so I don't need that much pressure. Why I cannot increase the pressure? Because it's a flexible filament, right? You, you know the problem, right? You cannot, you cannot push flexible filament. It will, just, uh, it will just bend. So as I cannot modify the pressure, which is one factor of the extrusion, then I change the other factor, which is the viscosity. And the high flow is allowing you to print uh, at, a, at, a, at a regular speed because uh, we solved the uh, one part of the chart, which is the uh, viscosity part. Um, a rigid high temperature TPU. Yeah, high temperature TPU is also a question I would have for you guys. I had a lot of people asking me, what's the heat resistance of our, of our TPU? To be honest, I don't really know how to answer that because, you know, the TPU, this is from uh, 3D Print Novasia. Yeah, great designer. We use this, uh, this wallet for all our shows. Um, the heat resistance of TPU. So how do you define heat resistance? Uh, usually we use the point at which the temperature, at which the material will soften. And then before it softens, we consider it as resistant, resistant to the temperature. Well, the TPU will soften at around minus 30 degrees C or minus maybe 60 degrees C or something like this. And then, so is it the answer you are expecting like minus 30 degrees? So the heat resistance of TPU is minus 30 degrees or... Um, I'm not too sure because any material, even TPU, will become you know rigid at some point if you lower the temperature, and any material will become soft. Uh, any polymer will become soft at some point if you increase the temperature. So, if that what you mean by heat resistant, then uh, then yes, uh, it's uh, minus thirty degree, I guess, around there. Um, but yeah, if you could help me understand a little bit what you mean by you know, when, when people ask me what's the heat resistance of your TPU, then that will allow me to, uh, you know, either design a test to answer the question properly or at, at least understand where, what, 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 what data you guys are, are looking for. Um, industrial website is down and I don't know the pricing of, 
for Polycore. Yeah, so the industrial website is uh, will be also renovated with uh, the new website that's going to be released this month. Um, the Polycore now is not something you can just buy. Uh, you can just buy online. It's more you can contact us, and then we can quote a certain quantity of Polycore because this is usually, you know, huge. Uh, it's like it's like a bag of 25 kg, and then you have a certain amount of uh, of them, and then. We just uh, because there's a lot of customer service that comes with it. Uh, we develop it a, a, a good amount of knowledge when it comes to extrude pallets with an extruder, extruder like a screw printer, basically. So we want to be in a close contact with the customer when using a Polycore product. Why is Polylite PC so much less tough than Polymax PC? Isn't PC really tough? Um, that's uh, you know, a lot of people say our PC is not real PC or some other PC are more real than other. This is the same. If you come down to the definition of PC, what is PC? Uh, we work with Covestro. PC is, uh, you know, uh, um, well, it's a polycarbonate, you know, the, the, poly, the, the, the polymer chain. But there's many, many ways of, uh, you know, designing that, uh, that, actual, uh, that actual formula. They have what hundreds of different uh, grades that they have developed it. and not only grades where you you know you mix some additive grades where you modify the uh, the actual you know the the the, the polycarbonate i i don't know the actual details but two polycarbonate one can have a high tg one can have a low tg but they are all polycarbonate polycarbonate is more is more like a family of uh, of products so I, I, I'm, I'm not sure I understand very well when people say it's not like real polycarbonate. What, what is the real one? Out of, out of the whole family, which one is considered as the real one? Would it be the one that is the most common one, which is like maybe 145 degrees, uh, degrees C of uh, gas transition temperature and then behaving more or less uh, as a tough material? Would that be, you know, the, uh, the pure PC? Uh, so that's also another one. Where, and, and that's exactly why I, I like this, uh, this weekly stream, because I want to understand, you know, how, what's your vision of material? And then we can, we can connect our both language. Because when you ask me, you know, what's the difference between your Polymax PC and Polycarbonate? Then I have to understand, you know, what do you mean by poly Polycarbonate? How do you see Polycarbonate? Then I can tell you what's the difference. Um, and then I forgot the question. <laughs> Uh, so why, yeah, why isn't, why isn't it PC tough? Yeah, so that's the reason. There is some PC that, uh, that, uh, that are not. But uh, tough would be resistant to, uh, you know, to the impact, so the impact resistance. Uh, if you injection mold PC or if you print PC, they will have different uh, mechanical behavior. They will have different, uh, different behavior when it comes to mechanical properties. Uh, so that could be that could be one reason. If you're printing Polylite PC on a on a regular desktop printer without heated chamber, then you might not have the toughness that Polymax PC will have on the same printer. But if you print Polylite PC at the right condition, the perfect condition, then it might bring you much more toughness than it does on your regular printer. Uh, you should do uh, OD green colored filament, OD, OD, olive, olive dab green, is that correct? Uh, the kind of uh, how far this Polyterra army green is from uh, olive dab green. I will have to check. Actually, I don't have the whole setup yet, but uh, I hope I will have, you know, some different screen and then I can share the screen with you so we can, you know, I, I want to, I want to show you some actual, you know, technical information, some graph, some graph, and then I would like to have some kind of whiteboard where I can explain to you some, some different topics. So, but that's the first stream. And then uh, in, in the other stream, we will be able to develop a little bit uh, the whole setup so that I can use more tools in order to explain myself a little bit better. Um, but yeah, send me the Panton code. Uh, I, I do think I have it actually uh, because that's not the first time I hear this request. Uh, and also the Polylite PLA Pro. We have different army green. Uh, you can check if there's one of them that go close to the one you're looking for. 
Uh, if not, you can share the, the exact content code you're, you're looking for. On the website that we are going to launch, there will be some, uh, some color suggestion and then people will be able to vote for it. Or you can also go on our Reddit. We just opened uh, a new community that is called Polymaker where you can share a lot of stuff. Uh, I've seen two projects that I'm planning to talk about in the next week's stream where I will be able to share my screen. Uh, but you can also add some color requirement and then you know people can vote for the different colors and then depending on which one will be towards the top, then during the stream we can select a particular color and then we can see if we can develop that, uh, that particular color. Um, how can we find the better spools on Amazon? Yeah, so the goal is that the people using it uh, do not know so much about uh, Polymaker. We want a very unbiased one, but um, try, try hard TPU, try foam TPU, try this kind of thing. And then you may, uh, you may arrive to, uh, to some of our uh, better tested products. Actually, I've seen, you know, I've seen, we put our lightweight in beta testing on Amazon. And I've seen a review from someone in the, uh, the uh, RC plane industry. And then uh, his passion is RC plane. And then he suddenly has this pool. And then uh, he, he doesn't know where he come, uh, come from. He say, come from Polymaker because there is still our name. And then he try, he say, oh, that's a pretty good stuff, but there's no information everywhere, blah, blah, blah. And then that's exactly the kind of feedback we want. And then in his two reviews, the videos that I've seen, there's a huge amount of feedback that is super useful for us. And uh, that's the kind of thing that, uh, that we are looking for. Um, how can we, uh, okay. I try to get every material instead of every color. Yeah. So actually we have 28 color of polytherapy PLA. I think we also have 28 different materials. Um, seven different PLA, two dissolvable support, one breakaway, uh, five polycarbonate, uh, somewhere around uh, three TPU, four nylon. Yeah, if you have this whole thing, take a picture and I will send you a, a spool for free. Uh, what's, the, uh, what's the max temperature of the nylon cardboard spool? What's the max temperature of the nylon cardboard spool? Sorry, I'm, I'm not sure I understand. Are you talking about uh, the nylon that is on the cardboard spool? the maximum temperature that the spool can, can handle. Like for example, if you want to dry the spool, uh, if that's the question, then we develop it the glue ourselves. We are a material engineer, right? So we develop it the, uh, the glue ourselves uh, in order to maintain the, uh, uh, the production process we have at the moment. And I believe uh, it should be above 100 degrees C. So you can go above 100, like 100 and let's say 100 is the limit. Uh, you can dry the spool at 100 degrees without any uh, deformation issue. I hope that was the question. Uh, what, what's the easiest bill plate to print TPU on? Uh, what's the easiest bill plate to print TPU on? Uh, from my experience, I had, I think the best one was, uh, was glass with glue. The worst one being, let me think, the worst one being, I think, the, the, you know, the build tech like, you know, the, the kind of, uh, I don't know how they call that, but it's made out of uh, polycarbonate, the uh, build tech uh, thing. I, I believe that was the, uh, the worst one. But to be honest, I never had really issue printing TPU um, like on, on any build plate. So I don't know, but uh, I do have, some, uh, I do have some, uh, some memory that it worked very well on glass with glue. And I may have some, or maybe on blue tape, maybe I added some blue tape on the build tape and then it didn't work very well. Um, I, I've, I've seen less and less glass build plate on the market. I don't know why, that's, that's actually one of my favorite build plate. It's, it's very versatile. Uh, you can add a bunch of stuff, you can clean it very easily, but somehow I see less and less. I don't know if it's because you know, the other one is cheaper and is more durable. You know, you can break glass pretty easily. Uh, but anyway, I really love that, uh, you know, the Ultimaker way of the glass plate. Um, has TH3D has a really good sticker type of plate. That's great. Okay, I'm not sure I know that uh, company. 
Hi, Custom 3D Specialties. Thank you for joining. Can you guys look into more Cura material profile? Yes, we are working on, uh, we are working with Vilchi Maker in order to add more and more material in the material audience. Right now, I think we have uh, all our nylon, our polycast, I believe our ASA, um, polysmooth. So one thing to note is uh, we cannot add material that is in their portfolio. So for example, we cannot add our PLA or our PLA Pro or our PTG, I believe, all the material that are close to their material. I, at that time, at least, uh, it, it was not allowed. So um, there is at least the material that are unique to their portfolio. Uh, but, but that's a good point. I wish more 3D printer company or slicer company would, uh, would open the door or at least be explicit on how we can add our profile. Uh, I like the idea maker because idea maker has a library uh, like uh, ideamaker.io I believe it's called and then and then there's all the profile and then company can, can go in there and then put all of their all of their profiles so it's very open. I mean I don't even mind you know being responsible of the of the profile if it doesn't work then that comes back to point maker and then we will improve it. Because sometimes some printer company, they don't want to add the profile because then they are responsible of, of that profile on the slicer. Um, I believe people think of bulletproof glass when they think of PC. <laughs> yeah, that's one type of PC. I don't know if we are quite there yet with the 3D printing PC we have, but um, that's good to know. Matt Olive Dab Green. Awesome. Same question. Will you make filament profile for Prusa Slicer? Yeah, same thing. Uh, I think we contacted them already, and I believe it was not uh, it was not clear. Or at least I, I, I right now I, I have no ideas how to add the profile. Uh, I can have the profile on our website. If you go on our website in the download section, we have some profiles. Uh, we are changing the website, so there will be more profile in the new one. Uh, maybe the one. Uh, maybe it's been two or three months we haven't updated the current one, but that's one way we can do. But I wish it's much easier for you. You you download Prusa Slicer, you load the material directly in the slicer. You just select which material you're using, and then you just uh, you just print with it. Right now you have to go on our website. You have to download the profile. You have to import it in your slicer, and hopefully it's, it's working because maybe the version we are using is not the same as your version. Blah 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 blah. Uh, do you think you'll ever release your own printer? <laughs> That's funny. That was a topic for a long time in Polymaker. Um, however, however, you know, the material part, the printer part, the slicer part, the hardware part, uh, you know, the accessory hardware part are so huge. I mean, there's so many things to, to, to think about and then to develop, to optimize that we believe that as a company, we should stay focused. We are making filament, we are doing it well. We don't want to do filament on one side and then we put some resources on the printer and then the printer works halfway, the filament works halfway. Uh, right now, the best is to create great relationship within the market with other company, great relationship with printer company, slicer company. That's why uh, I believe if you go on a different website or if you go on a different printer company, you, will, you should be able to see our name here and there. We are really trying to create this connection within the market because the only way we can provide a final solution is that each of us do their job perfectly. And the connection and the partnership between all of these companies are also smooth and, uh, uh, and towards, uh, towards the customer. Uh, I can think about Smart, Life, Smart, Smart Slice, uh, which is a uh, plugin for Cura. So Smart Slice work with Ilchi Maker. Ilchi Maker work with us for the material, and then we work for Smart, Smart, with Smart Slice uh, to test the material, and then that combination create already one solution of uh, testing your uh, uh, testing the uh, the setting. Uh, on, a, on a virtual part to see if it would uh, resist uh, actual stress. So, um, so the, uh, the short answer is uh, no. 
Could we talk uh, viscoplasticity? I always wonder why PTG can yield so much, but be so brittle at the same time. Uh, good question. Uh, that's, uh, that's, um, that's a long answer. I'm trying to find a way to, uh, to answer it uh, very quickly. But uh, basically, it, it all has to do, because it's already uh, one hour and five minutes, so we can leave some topic for next week. Um, but it has to do with, uh, with the process, like in which way you process your PTG, uh, whether you injection mold it, whether you print it, depending on how you process the material, then it will, it will behave uh, differently. That's the part we talked about when we developed the nylon for the 3D printed car. They use PP for the injection molding. They use nylon for the 3D printing. The, the end part behave the same way. PTG is the same. There is some belief or like there is some data on PTG that are injection molding. There is some data on PTG that are printed in certain way. Uh, but we can go deeper on that topic in the, in the next stream. So guys, I think I, uh, I caught up on, uh, on all the different questions. Uh, it's been exactly uh, 60 minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much for joining our live stream. Uh, it's very important for us to uh, connect with, uh, with people using our materials and understand, uh, understand uh, from them how, how you guys see 3D printing materials. It helps us to develop uh, better materials, to, better, uh, to develop a better understanding uh, of, uh, of our users. And it definitely helps you if we come up with uh, better materials. Thank you, thank you everyone. And uh, please make sure you go on our Reddit. Uh, please make sure you go post your project. Uh, I really would like to see what you guys are doing. I would like to spend some time going through your project. I also have a lot of projects here that I didn't have time to talk, but we have the all time in the world every week. Thank you again and I see you guys next week.